Hello, I'm Tony Guida. This is My New York. Long before millennials overran Williamsburg, in fact, long before there were millennials, my guest was the champion in chief of Brooklyn. Now he is cheerleading for the other boroughs as well as vice president of the city's tourism office. He is Marty Markowitz, and you will meet him next. I'd like to welcome you to the program, Marty Markowitz. It's Thank been a while since you. I've seen you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, for our audience's sake, you are the vice president uh, of borough engagement and promotion. Of borough engagement, meaning Primarily that. Primarily promoting uh, international and national visitors to New York City, to the boroughs beyond Manhattan. Right. The Not idea excluding is to, Manhattan, but beyond Manhattan right. as well. The idea is to get folks who come to the city, and they're coming right. by the million, yes. to get out and see the rest of... Without a you question. Know, not, not the stick in Manhattan. To go to so how do you do that? What do, do you have, are there tours? Are there packages? What well, are you doing? there are, I mean, uh, as I uh, shared with many folks, I wish I had appreciated NYC and company uh, on how fortunate uh, New York City is to have this agency. These are um, total professionals whose career it is uh, to specialize in, uh, in uh, promoting New York City. I should the number tell one our destination. Audience, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, just in all. case they don't know, uh, that's a that name doesn't indicate. N NYC, NYC and company, company is the city's tourism. Is the office. city's tourism and marketing destination okay. agency, and it's a private. Receives some funding from New York City right. and uh, and uh, solid f uh, funding from New York City, but also a lot of their funding is privately uh, raised, and uh, they're supported by uh, hotels and Broadway major restaurants, and, mm -hmm. uh, and they're very much involved in the tourist lives uh, throughout New York City and all the boroughs. Uh, right. And I think the, the major effort is, you know, pinpointing potential conferences and conventions, uh, packages that they work on to try to attract uh, tourists into our city that will spend a significant amount of time and, of course, it generates huge amounts of resources for the city's use. Right. But huge. how do you get them, or you and the folks you work with, how do you get those people to get out of Manhattan and go to Brooklyn, the Bronx, because we, Queens? The idea is that to see the real New York City, while it's beautiful on the east side and west side, don't get me wrong, uh, going to uh, certainly the Empire State Building and Broadway and Rockefeller Center, beautiful, don't get me wrong. However... Uh, you can say the same about Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Uh, you could say the same about Williamsburg, uh, or Brooklyn Heights in the Promenade, Brighton Beach, Coney Island uh, in Brooklyn. I could go on and on. You could say the same thing about the unbelievable areas in Queens that are among the most diverse in the world. And Staten Island, I have to tell you. Increasingly, with what's coming down the line and some of their great culturals and great Italian restaurants especially. So we've got something in this city, in each of the boroughs, that's unique. And of course, you can't discount the ethnic diversity. And it's important that those oh. that come from India have a chance to... Uh, to visit uh, uh, Queens in particular, and those that visit from other nations. There's well, someone I'm, here that they know. I'm from the Bronx. You're you from go. Brooklyn. You we go. know the value and the, and the beauty you and do. the greatness of the city. You do. All those things you were just talking about, Marty, how do you get that word out to sure. the visitors from all sure. over the world well, and, the, and other parts of the country? How, what specifically do you do to get them out into the boroughs? While New York City will always be the number one destination of choice, you constantly have to sell New York with new, and I emphasize the new in New York City. Mm -hmm. And that's what NYC and company is dedicated to. And for those of us, like myself, that represent uh, the boroughs beyond Manhattan, uh, it's constantly being in touch with uh, uh, promoters, with, uh, uh, on the marketing front, uh, uh, digitally, of course, uh, platforms they use, uh, uh, tour groups, uh, bus operators, whatever it may be to talk to them about the great sights and sounds in each of the boroughs. And there are many, many travelers that have been to Manhattan, have, uh, don't get me wrong, absolutely adore it, but they say, you know what, I'm ready to see something different. 
and increasingly, if you look at the tourism numbers, uh, the boroughs are, ex no question about it, experiencing uh, some of that uh, special effort well, let's that NYC look, and company is focusing let's on. Let's look at the tourism numbers. The, the agency is projecting for this year mm -hmm. nearly 60 million right. visitors right. will come to the city. And I was looking at that number, and it, it, what struck my uh, eye was that it, if the projection holds, um, it'll be not even a million and a half more than last year, right. which seems like a relatively small number. Uh, Does that concern the age? It's, it's, I wouldn't call it a relatively a small number. But it's like 2%. Course, but of course, uh, you, you can't divorce uh, tourism in New York City from the rest of America and beyond. And uh, certainly with the strength of the dollar overseas, uh, the, the challenges, I guess, that England may be facing with their recent votes, and England is a very important source of our tourism, uh, and some of the other challenges that uh, countries in South America may face, uh, all of that has a part to, uh, yeah. you know, that uh, may impact tourism. But overwhelmingly, the numbers are up, and we're very fortunate. New York City is very fortunate to have folks like Fred Dixon, who leads NYC and company, and Brian Grimaldi, Kevin Booth, and, uh, uh, and Kelly Curtin, all of them, and the whole staff there. I, I admire them, and I must tell you that uh, uh, I walk around and will listen to them, and especially the focus of their, their marketing studies and surveys. And so they project, they pretty much project where visitors are coming from, how to get more visitors from those areas to come here, how much they're spending, where they're spending, and be able to work to try to enhance that. And it's, 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 and it's constantly pitching to bring those conferences here. And not, by the way, not just for 2017, but they're going 2019, 2020, oh, sure. 21, book. 22 have to book years ahead ahead of time. Sure. And I admire, they are, like I said, just an outstanding agency. Well, you mentioned uh, how important Great Britain is to yes. the tourism uh, business here. Yes. And I was looking at the uh, stats from NYC and company. And in fact, uh, people from Great Britain are the number one, mm -hmm. the, of all the visitors that come to New York, right. most come from Great Britain. Canada, Great Britain, Germany, China increases. Well, China's like fourth. Australia Great Britain is, is number one yeah. on the list. So, yes, and the important. reason I the reason I uh, want to focus on that for a second is uh, it goes to the point you were making about currents around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, they had the Brexit vote in in um, uh, in the UK, and it demolished the. Uh, uh, it demolished the pound, the, mm -hmm. the British pound, for a while, and still, I guess. Um, and the dollar has been, for the past 18 months, the dollar has been very, very strong, strong, especially against the pound. Very strong. I imagine that puts a crimp in well, people's plans. Obviously, it's uh, impacted in a, in, a, in a modest way uh, spending habits, and, and uh, that's all reflected in retail sales uh, a bit. Uh, and uh, wherever you know that tourists spend money, but you know these things are cyclical, uh, and uh, we know that uh, uh, you have to continue then to emphasize that New York City is not just for wealthy folks visiting from around the world. It's also, in many respects, you can get a really tremendous quality at a, at, a, at, a, at a competitive price. In other words, if you're on a more modest budget, uh, you can still visit New York City. There are tremendous... I can't think of a city that has more free things to do than New York City in every borough. I, I don't think there's a question about it. I wonder if those guides are still around. Do you remember those guides? Well, we have the big operators. Well, we have them. No, I mean, sure. the, uh, fill, in the, fill in the blank. Name of city on um, $5 a day. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if those are still... I, I do know that our office is a very aggressive, um, Chris Haywood and his great team, in really uh, m aggressively putting out stories uh, together with the newspapers on the values that you find in New York City. Uh, in all five boroughs that are either free or modest price. And by the way, today, with the record numbers of hotel rooms we have in the city, it really fills every price point from the yeah. very affluent to the, to, the, to the more modest priced. And that's the choice that you've got such great diversity of products. Right. Really. 
I, well, and in all the boroughs, my God, look at Brooklyn, the number of hotels that would, it's unbelievable. Well, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. interesting you should bring that up because you were borough president yes. for 12 years. You bet. And, um, you bet. I wonder if you even, and I, I sort of a, this is sort of an imagination, hyperbole mm -hmm. in this question. Do you even, do you even recognize your borough? <laughs> I mean, well, of course, I had a little hand in uh, yeah, the course. development of downtown Brooklyn and certainly uh, Barclays uh, and in my decisions as borough president and using my position. And uh, although borough presidents don't have the, certainly not the final stay, uh, they're certainly a catalyst for change. And depending upon your relationship with the mayor of the city of New York, uh, and the city council speaker and members of the city council, you still have uh, some leverage. And, um, uh, and throughout those 12 years, uh, uh, I, I use whatever modest leverage I may have had to, to ensure that Brooklyn got the attention that it deserved. And by the way, it's, I think it's, uh, it's uh, paid off in great results. I mean, there's no question that the diversity of folks that have made Brooklyn their homes, that are working in Brooklyn, the number of uh, increase of jobs that are going on and more to come and hotels and uh, multifamily buildings with a diversity of incomes in those buildings. It's all bodes well. The use of our waterfront, I mean, you know, Williamsburg is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> but some of it, I will admit that uh, as much as I knew that I had, uh, that Brooklyn was a uh, was a beautiful apple, just needed polishing, a nice, it was a, it was a diamond and just needed that right that right polishing. Uh, some of it, this is going on when I'm downtown Brooklyn, I look at our skyline, I'm just blown away. Because I grew up in a time where uh, the Williamsburg Savings Bank building on Flappish Avenue, we thought was, wow, this is yeah. like, what a tall skyscraper this is. <laughs> and today, and in the days to come, it's, it will always have, like um, the Empire State Building in Manhattan, and the Chrysler Building, uh, the Williamsburg Savings Bank building on Flappish Avenue will always be very iconic to us. That's I want sure. to come back to uh, some of the issues about Brooklyn sure. specifically sure. Um, that you're touching on. But getting back to tourism sure. for a second, um, I just became aware that with a New York City ID card, which the city started, I don't know, yes. a year or so. I commend the mayor for doing that. Um, people who have those yes. apparently can visit so many cultural yes, many institutions. Yes, many Free. Yes, which I think is tremendous. And I don't, I don't know if this, those visits would count as tourism because you know these are New Yorkers, let's say, going to the Bronx right. Zoo or the or the uh, Botanic Garden. Right. right. But there is, uh, when you were talking about the opportunity to do things at a reasonable cost in New York, um, New Yorkers or at least ones who have these ideas can go to a whole range right. of uh, oh, I, I think versions it's, free. I think it's important to, um, to encourage those folks uh, to uh, become involved and acclimate fully in the life of New York City. And I, and I believe that a significant number of them, once they go to these cultural institutions and then continue along their education and careers, will, will someday become a member a dues-paying member, contribute, and who knows, maybe even become active in future offices. Yeah. So you have to expose, um, um, you have to expose folks to many, many different arts out there. I mean, a good example, which has nothing to do with this conversation, uh, opera right now. You, you know, it's really, it's not exactly the most uh, popular art form. It is and among those that absolutely love opera. Well, uh, and it's but also not terribly course, democratic. Course, it's uh, very expensive. Oh, I know that. But a lot of our young people are not being exposed to that and, and therefore are removed more and more from that. And uh, So um, you want to preserve that, uh, of course. Uh, and I think we live in an international city. I would say it's um, home to everyone from everywhere. There's no question about it. Um, and uh, this is where the arts are. This is the center of the world, as far as I'm concerned. I mm -hmm. think most of the world would probably agree with that. Uh, th let's go back to uh, something you, you touched on, the number of hotels and hotel yes. rooms. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, everywhere you look in Manhattan these days, they're building, if it's not a, if it's not a condo, it's <laughs> probably a hotel. And um, so we have a... a Tremendous amount of rooms, and apparently the the uh, occupancy rates remain They're pretty, pretty strong. strong. They are strong, yes. Uh, but it brings up the question of Airbnb, right? 
Um, I was looking up some statistics on Airbnb, and um, by their own um, uh, statements, 54% of their listings in New York, right. uh, New York City and state, 54% of them are for, oh, maybe it's only the city, but 54% of them are for entire homes mm -hmm. or entire apartments, which suggests that those listings are illegal mm -hmm. because we have this limit of you can't rent for under 30 days, I mean, for uh, more than 30 days. Right. Um, the governor uh, is considering a bill to, to impose some very strict fines uh, on those kinds of operators and those listings. How do you feel about this? How does the how does NYC and company look at this? Well, listen, NYC and company obviously are uh, working hand in hand with the hotel industry. There's no question about it. Um, the, the hotels, the hotels generate uh, the jobs and good quality jobs. Let me tell you, I admire that union. They do an unbelievable job. And even those that may not be a member of the union, it is a, a, a great career path uh, for so many folks that have chosen to live in New York City. The taxes it generates uh, is incredible for the future, present and future of New York City. So, um, um, uh, uh, and the fact is we can't ignore that the price point of hotels is up and down, affluence to modest. There's no question about it. Um, uh, having said that, this is now being discussed publicly. It's up for public debate, both on the gubernatorial level and uh, city level. And I'll leave it to those that are making those decisions uh, to come up with the right balance uh, and to make sure that uh, those that... Uh, are providing uh, uh, Airbnb services that are actually withdrawing the amount of affordable housing that's available for people that are in desperate need of housing, that that balance be found. Because that's the priority in this town, providing enough full-time affordable housing for our residents. That was a challenge when I was borough president and a state senator, and it is still a great challenge, a great challenge. I want to go back to your, your comment about uh, the price point of hotel rooms in the city. Uh, there's a restaurant I, I, I frequent in, uh, on 42nd Street near the theater district. Um, whenever I'm going to the theater, uh, West Bank Cafe, and across the street, uh, rising, empty lot now rising and almost finished, I suppose, a pod hotel. And I hadn't really been aware of these things. Um, so I asked about it and, and did a little looking into it. Well, apparently we have several of these in the city where, where it's a, apparently a very uh, snug room and, uh, and it obviously does, you know, 100 bucks maybe, uh, something like that. Different product for different tastes and different wallets. That's all I can answer. I, would it be my choice? Absolutely <laughs> not. First off, my body is too big for it. But the other part of it is absolutely not. That's, that would be my taste. But for those that, that want to maximize their spending and minimize it on accommodations while they're in the city, then God bless. That's all I could say. God yeah, bless. I think there's a... Uh, God bless. I forget. I think they're actually called Pod. Yeah. You know, it's... And uh, then there's one on... Um, 10th Avenue called Yotel. Yes, Yotel. Uh, right. Listen, you know, it's a, my I wouldn't be my choice either. But. My wife, Jamie, is still so upset that a lot of those buildings, she's a flea market person. There used to be unbelievable flea markets in Manhattan on 6th Avenue, wherever it was, and she used to be a regular at all of them. They're all gone now, pretty much. They're all gone now, office towers. But it's uh, uh, we, we can't stay as a, in one state. We constantly have to change. That's always change. Let me, That's let the me one constant. You, let me ask you about something else that tourists, sure. uh, tourists seem to like a lot bike lanes and yes. that's not something you liked I, I think i remember a news conference you showed up to one time yes i did riding on a tricycle i did to make your feelings about bike lanes your 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 antipathy to bike lanes quite clear have you changed your mind well, listen um it's not a matter of changing my mind you know you have to uh sooner or later recognize no matter what your personal opinion may be you can't stop manana uh, you can't stop tomorrow. And uh, there's no question that, uh, that younger people, um, this is a, a preferred mode of transportation for many of them. And by the way, many tourists love sure. to see New York City on a bicycle. I know. I, 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 it's, 
Listen, I grew up in a time, maybe you did too, Tony. I knew every single model of an automobile. Yes. I knew when it came out. I knew the, the nuances. I knew this. I knew. Now, obviously, those young people that I was that age uh, then, now they're not dreaming of those cars anymore. <laughs> they're not dreaming of those cars anymore. So, I, but I still feel, personally, this has nothing to do with NYC and company. Uh, you know, there has to be, there has to be a balance uh, between uh, the, where we put the bicycle lanes and where it makes sense um, and at the same time, I, uh, personally, I don't think that uh, parking should be removed where it's already one of the tightest cities to park. And I don't have to tell you, and mo loads of people still need their automobiles to get around. And I just think that we have to just do our best to maintain this balance. That's all. Well, I can tell you as personal experience as a tourist, I've been a tourist of other uh, in Montreal, yep. I don't know, 10 years yes. ago or yep. something, I first encountered Yes. what we call here city bike yes there was this thing in front and i found out oh i could just rent rent this bike with my credit card and draw and yes. pedal all over montreal that's true i thought it was fabulous yes and of course we have city bike now yes so jay walder is the head of it and he used to be my constituent when i was a state senator <laughs> he's gone a long way i'll tell you yeah Gone a um, long way. so yes tourists this is a this is a i so, think a city has I, to have I, these. I guess like i said that a city can't uh, stay stagnant uh, a person can't stay stagnant either that doesn't mean that i'll ever ever uh, how do you say it uh, this that, that it'll be my favorite uh, uh, subject but nonetheless i recognize that there has to be this balance and taste change and i know how taste change because i see in my office if I come in with lunch or whatever, and let me just say, it's, you know, whatever it is, it's scrumptious and large. Everyone in the office I work just about to a person, they're all into salads. Everyone's into salads. Kale. Salads and Everybody's kale. eating kale. Like, I don't know. There's so many varieties of kale. <laughs> they're going to live to 140, and I'll live to 138. Yeah. I mean, so I'm, I, whatever oh, it is, yeah. but taste change, and I have to well, say... You know what? I can't imagine what my mom said when I was in my 30s, what she said about me. I can't imagine. So, you know, it's, it's inevitable change. I don't understand kale, but, but we'll move not, on. Not, I don't either. You, 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 you hear that, Kevin Booth? Go ahead. Yeah. You, moved, you mentioned a couple of times uh, the importance of housing, affordable housing, yes. importance of jobs. And it leads me to ask you about the project in Brooklyn that you were the champion of, Atlantic Yards, now has yes. a new name, I think Pacific, Pacific something. Yeah. Pacific um, the promise there yes. was that it was yes. going to provide affordable housing. And it will. And thousands of jobs. 2,250. It, it seems to not have delivered on either. Well, okay, so, so the, uh, uh, we have to revisit the whole history of Atlantic Yards. Uh, the eight years of deferrals and lawsuits and uh, uh, the economy going tanking down. And uh, so there's a, it's got a long and very rich history. Yeah, it it's took a amazing. long time to come. It's amazing to that get anything, big, the anything big can actually happen in this city. But it did happen. And the promise that was made then is the promise that is going to be kept in the years ahead. Well, let me, let me ask you. 2,250 affordable apartments. And as we speak, as you know, one building well, totally is being constructed. That's all affordable, and it will continue let me, that way. Let me sure. talk about that. As you say, 2,250 affordable uh, apartments. Uh, of the 6,000 that, change. not an inconsiderable con number. The first one that's about to open, 100% affordable, I think it has a name called Carlton, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's about to open 60% of the units in this affordable uh, uh, building are going to go to households earn, earning $100,000 or more. Well, That's not well, what we envisioned when this was promised. Uh, that is absolutely, to the best of my knowledge, not true. Uh, they laid out exactly what the income skews would be, and it would be a leveraged, meaning it would be a, a diverse income level from the from the very low in, lower income to moderate to to working to middle to. So uh, 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 the, the government the, way, uh, the government was very precise in exactly what the pricing would be in all those apartments. I think that um, along the way, the developers got the government, the city, to adjust things. Well, what what the 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 the, the pledge of the need of affordable housing, by the way, is is I grew up in public housing, for instance, uh, is for those that 
qualify for public housing, and this is not public housing, but it's that yes. income. And it also means that if somebody household is making $80,000 a year, even $100,000 a year, let me tell you, if you think those folks are living on Easy Street with two kids and a husband and wife or whatever, whatever it may be, uh, whatever arrangements uh, might be, whatever marriage might be, uh, the, uh, the, the, today there's a crush for the need of affordable housing for various income levels. So right, that, of course. So it's a balance, and uh, this was one of the major promises of Atlantic Yards, and it's going to be kept, and it's going to be kept. And as you know now, uh, it's Forest City Ratner under Mary Ann Gilmartin, together with Greenland Construction, a Chinese company, uh, that are accelerating the construction of the buildings. And uh, I think over the years, not that far away from now, the promise will be kept for the affordable well, apartments, and I think that's fantastic. Let's talk about jobs. Uh, I think they promised 10,000 office jobs uh, and 15,000 construction jobs. Well, as of right now, there are no office jobs, but we could maybe assign that to the fact that they haven't built any office buildings yet, and those are still out, out, in, the, out in the future. But the 15,000 construction jobs uh, hasn't come anywhere near that, no. and, and the most, mo most of the jobs are are at the arena, have been in the arena, and those are part-time jobs. No uh, and there are some full-time jobs. There are part-time and full-time. I don't have the numbers in front of me. And well, as, I, and as far as the, uh, and, uh, as far as the number of construction jobs, uh, when they, uh, uh, and uh, from what I've read over the next two years or so, three years, the, the accelerated construction schedule of multiple new buildings, all that will add to the number of construction uh, positions. As you know, that... Uh, uh, that, you know, coming out of the horrible economy, getting back on the footing, uh, moving ahead on this, all of this had a hand in this. Uh, you know, they try to do it uh, via uh, modular housing. Right. They, I mean, to create Which a whole... Which cuts down on the number create, of jobs. No, no, again. but also make construction, construction more moderate income, therefore the greater possibility of starting a whole new industry for the borough. And, of course, you know, there's been a lot of turns on that as well. But I know one thing, uh, one of the, of all the companies I've worked with, uh, Forest City Ratner was one of the most progressive and socially committed. I really believe that. And they're still and, and entrepreneurs, and there's nothing wrong with being no. entrepreneurs. But they have a social conscience, and they value community. They nothing do. wrong with a developer making money. There's we nothing wrong with that. that. That's their job. But, uh, you know, way back at the beginning, you said, and yes. I, yes, I want to quote you, jobs and housing That's right. this project uh, will go to those who need the most. You uh, still stand by that? Well, I still would always hope that it would go to those. Of course. I mean, that was when we, when, I well, mean, hope first, off, from first off, first off, housing was an important part of this project. Um, uh, and uh, uh, really, really making a new little city within a, uh, a larger city. Right. Uh, but also sports were an important part of this too. I mean, I'm not going to minimize, you know, when I ran for borough president, I, I promised the folks, if they were listening in Brooklyn, that I wanted to bring a national team to Brooklyn again. You did. And everyone the thought Nets, it was going to be the Brooklyn I Dodgers. Have, I have to but say, though, Marty, Dodgers, the Nets but, are never going to replace the Dodgers in the in the parts of Brooklyn. Well, I guess. you know, I, I, I would say <laughs> that we may, when, we when, may there's, have to leave it there. when there's a championship team, Ah. When they're really in the hunt, then you'll see how, then how, you'll what the how excitement much. will be, especially against the dreaded Manhattan Knicks. Yes. So we'll see. Spoken like a we'll good see. New Yorker, <laughs> a good Brooklyner. <laughs> Marty, uh, it's a delight to see you. Uh, continued success Thank with the uh, New York City and Company and the tourism much. efforts Thank in the you. city. It's very important Thank for you. all of us. It is. Nice to see you. Thank you, you very you. much. Thanks. All right. And uh, thank you for watching.